What's up, everyone? It is Tuesday, October 2nd, and we are live at 5. I'm Paul Wontorek. And I'm Beth Stevens. And over there is Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And hey, oh my God, look who's here. We have a big star here A big today. star, big Emmy winner, you guys. Hey. Darren Chris. Whoop, whoop. LC Fest is this Sunday, and Darren Chris is here to talk about everything happening in his life. And of course, Elsie Fest, which is like the must-see concert of Absolutely. every year. But first, today's top five. We found out who's going to think something's coming in this highly anticipated movie musical remake. Okay, we've been thinking about this casting for a long time for Steven Spielberg's West Side Story. I can't believe this movie's really happening. It's Now it's really, really happening really because happening. Ansel Elgort is going to play Tony. And this dude can sing. So we're excited about that. He's got a Golden Globe nomination for Baby Driver. Mm-hmm. He can do lots of fancy things in a He's car. He's in those, uh, what, Divergent? Is that what Divergent, yes. Fault in Our Stars, that of the course. the kids call them, That's the Divergent <laughs> films. The, uh, the Fault in Our Stars, right? Oh, I yeah, saw that. that was a good one. I saw that. Yes, you did. Uh, this is the first casting announced. We don't know who's playing the other parts. We know that they've been casting their net wide. Mm-hmm. Um, but we do know, and we already knew this, that Justin Peck, Tony winner Justin Peck, will choreograph. So it's going to be very dancey. I mean, like, I, it's West Side Story. I well, should hope so. you never know when they redo something. Oh, yeah, you don't know. Right, you don't know that. Right. And it's going to start filming next summer. That's right. We don't have dates on it, and we don't have other casting, but the first bit of news is exciting. And two new people are joining the diner. Okay, so there's going to be uh, new stars in Waitress. Yes, Waitress. I mean, how many stars have been in Waitress? A lot, a of, lot stars. of stars. A lot are in of stars in Waitress, yeah. A lot of stars are in Waitress. And we just put up a feature with actually uh, Katie Lowe's and Adam Shapiro, who are ending their run this week, but check out that feature. And now we know that next week, Alex Weiss and Lenny Klingeman, yep. did I say it right? Or Lenny. Lenny, Lenny or Klingeman, I'm sorry. Know. Right to um, tell us how to pronounce your They name. will join the cast uh, as Oogie and Dawn. Or Ogie. Or Ogie. You can say however you want. That. Um, <laughs> you know them. You know him. He's like the weirdo in the diner and she falls for it. It's adorable. It's adorable subplot. They're the adorable couple. Yeah. Ador- mm-hmm. Aww. Aww. It is, it's truly adorable. <laughs> um, Alex, of course, was in Spring Awakening, Les Estrada Jones, and off Broadway, he was in Ride the Cyclone, Bear, uh, and Triassic Park with a Q, which was like Jurassic with Park. A park with a, a Q. Nice. And Leslie is making her Broadway debut. Lenny. And she played the role. Well, I'm sorry. I'm Lenny. reading the notes. It mm-hmm. says. Lenny. I'm sorry. I'm just Lenny. here to help my buddy. Caitlin. Sorry. Lenny <laughs> played the role in the national tour, and oh, now yeah. she's joining the Broadway company. So congratulations, Alex and Lenny. And we have finally known how to save the date for this upcoming Broadway musical. Okay, we've been hearing about this musical for a long time. We're talking about the Temptations musical, Ain't Too Proud to Beg, which you saw. It's just called Ain't Too Proud. Ain't Too Proud. And I did see it. Sorry. I did. Well, is this is like mistake day with the news. We're excited because we're giddy. Darren Chris is here. Um, ain't too Hi. proud. Hi. <laughs> now we're even more giddy. It set dates for Broadway. February 28th, 2019 will be previews, and it will open on March 21st at the Imperial Theater. Of course, this has a book by Dominique Morisot, who did Pipeline most recently at Lincoln Center, yeah. and Des Mackinov and Sergio Trujillo, who, of course, did Jersey Boys Together. And Summer, the Donna Summer and Musical. And Summer, the Donna Summer Musical. And all kinds musical, of other shows. But that's right. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Ain't Too Proud. And it's fantastic. I saw it. it's going to be a big hit. It's going to be nominated for Best Musical. And we already like the music. Love it. And this Broadway favorite is returning to the screen, and it's going to make fans very happy. Speaking of waitress. Speaking of Ogie. Yeah. Ogie, Augie, Ogie. Christopher Fitzgerald, <laughs> who we love. I we mean, do. how do you not love Christopher Fitzgerald? He uh, is. He will be in the sci-fi show Happy. He was already in it, right? Yeah. yeah. They mm-hmm. just have a suit it's new a three-time season. Tony nominee. I thought he had like twelve t- nominations. Uh, yeah, twelve. You're right. In wow. our heads. In our heads. <laughs> um, he will return as children's entertainer Sunny Shine on season two. Uh, he's a season. He's a series regular. It shows Chris Maloney and Bryce Lorenzo, and they haven't announced the actual date this will start. But we're very, very happy for but him. But come back to Broadway, Chris. Oh, please. he will. It's Christopher Show. <laughs> and the curtain is going up on this new Broadway play. Well, you know I'm excited for the Ferryman. That's starting previews tonight. This you're taking ownership of that. You're. Excited. I'm excited. <laughs> okay. <laughs> for Jez Butterworth's The Ferryman, uh, it plays the Jacobs Theater. And is directed by Sam Mendes. And it features Olivier winner Laura Donnelly, Patty Can- Considine. Lots of Irish names here. Or Laura mm-hmm. Donnelly. Okay, if we're no, going to go sh- that way <laughs> today. <laughs> you never know. Uh, yeah, so this will open on October 21st. Very exciting. Welcome to Broadway. So it's first preview. Cool. First preview. 
Awesome. I'm going to get out of here. Yeah, you got to talk about Elsie yeah, and her fest. Beth. Um, <laughs> yeah, hey, Kayla, they already know, but tell them all about today's guest. Yes. Guys, today we have Darren Chris in the studio with us today. He just won an Emmy for Outstanding Lead Actor in Limited Series or Movie for his incredible performance in The Assassination of Gianni Versace, colon, American Crime Story. He's appeared on Broadway in How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying and Hedwig and the Angry Inch. You may also know him from Glee, a very Potter musical. I could just keep going on. But today, he is talking about Elsie Fest, the very exciting outdoor musical theater festival. He's also a uh, two-time Broadway.com Audience Choice Award winner, so we really like him here. Leave all of your questions in the comments down below. Follow him on social media at Darren Chris, and please welcome Darren and Paul. Hello, Mr. Chris. Yeah, I wish I had like a so it looked like Beth just transformed <laughs> into me. <laughs> that, that Beth and I have been the same person the entire time. <laughs> it could How's work. it going? It's going good. I love being here. Look I at so, you. You I, look like the same normal guy that you before you won an Emmy. I was going to say the same about you. <laughs> Yeah, I don't have any new normal. trophies. Actually, uh, I did win an Emmy. Yeah. Actually, a local really? Emmy. Yeah, a that's local still, news Emmy. You know what? Uh, it's we're, but you know what? We're both Emmy winners now. I didn't even realize that until <gasps> oh. you just made. I knew that you had comment. a special glow about you. I would have brought mine in. It's smaller than yours. Well, did you didn't get it yet? Did you? Did no you get the that. engraved one yet? Uh, I did. They you got it. it. They have like an engraving bar. Uh, that night? That night. Really? You get one that's blank, and then you walk to the party, and there's like these guys that sort of. I did not Do know it that. For you. It's pretty rad, actually. And they are not partaking in the open bar at the engraving. No, bar, but I, I felt hope. there's. I I went up to the bar. I was like, yeah, I'll just take um. Just mine, just sort of light rocks is fine. <laughs> just do that. I did. I was next to Alex Bornstein. That was a cool little moment. Um, I have so many things I want to say. The studio looks great. I'm so oh. glad the show's doing well. Broadway.com has been sort of family of Elsie since the yes. since day since, one. Yes, since absolutely. Our, our this visit. is year five. This is year four, but four. it seems like five. Five um, years. Next year's year five. And that'll be a special year, just like <laughs> all the other ones. Um, I have so many comments about the day, the five that you just, the, all the news that you just said, but I won't. I'll, I'll say oh, I love that you're like talk. a Broadway. I, there were so news many things nerd. I wanted to say. I was like, okay, I won't. Yeah, I, we should have had a camera on you, a comment. <laughs> I thing. had to shut myself up. There were so many comments that I had. If you want to like, come in and like host a week of Live at Five, we're totally down totally for that. Fine. I would totally. We be don't down pay for much. That. But I, I'm not interested. Pay you in theater tickets. Ooh, yeah. well, Ooh. be careful with that because that's probably worth a lot more than you could pay me anyway. <laughs> Can we please? So t I, I don't want to like. We're gonna talk about LCFS, but I just have to. I have to have a. How much time do we have? Can we talk? As much as you as much have. As you okay, want. Keep going, keep going. Um, we're going to go till Sunday. <laughs> so you just have to be out by 6 p.m. Yeah, I'm sure there's a sound check. Sa sound check, exactly. Um, you won an Emmy Award for, and you were here a year ago talking about Elsie Fest, and you were, had started filming it, and we talked about it yeah, because was I was obsessed with the whole Andrew Cunanan case when it happened. Oh, you're one of those. I, yeah, oh, yeah. I, like, I, knew, really knew, yeah. I knew it all. So for me, I went into it kind of like, I don't know about this, but the show was so freaking good and you blew my mind thanks man so incredible and the way it was written and i mean and it won the series one as well yeah um but wow. you're like you're like this legit hollywood uh award-winning actor we fooled them good paul yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we fooled them real good they can't take it back they've already engraved it do you feel uh, a little more famous a little more respected have you started figuring out what you're going to do for your gots you got to eat oh, out now. man i don't know uh well <laughs> most importantly the tea it is, it is very much, uh, I think for anybody that may not have known what I wanted to do with my career, you know, if, if anybody didn't necessarily go, okay, this guy's an actor, yeah. uh, hopefully this helps that out, but I'm not saying it will. Um, I will say in the week after, even walking around New York, um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't respond well to uh, adulation i don't mm -hmm. like or, or, or like e even as a kid like if you know your aunts and uncles were like you know pinching my cheek i just never really responded to it so it's it's a weird thing that i would be in, a, in an industry that forces you into that if you've hopefully yeah. done a good enough job because certainly it's been the other as well people going that sucked <laughs> uh but uh either way it's weird I, I just respond to it in a very strange way uh but because i'm very proud of the show and i'm very proud of the work uh something like an emmy is uh Less about me and, and more about like the work we all did collectively and it's like a symbol of like something that's bigger than myself mm. that I'm like really proud to be connected to. So when people on the street are like, hey, and they recognize me or they say something, I'm really, like there's a new sense of like, I I'm really thankful. Like, thank you so much. Like, I'm happy to stop and talk about it because I feel like I have a new feather in my cap that I'm like, yeah, look at that feather. <laughs> <laughs> that's let's a big talk, feather. Let's talk about that feather. <laughs> I won't bring it up. If you bring it up, cool. But like, uh, it's less of a showy ego thing and more of like, I'm just really proud of the collective and that sort of is the, a symbol of the, the, 
the amalgam of, of everyone's work. Who's your Fancy favorite question. new friend you met because of all this? And like that, I mean, those co-stars alone. Oh yeah, I mean, and they, and like, like seeing you at all the fancy things with dude, them. Dude, even if any of this stuff hadn't happened, the fact that I got to work with those actors is like the big talk about a feather in your cap. They would uh, like blow your mind. Uh, yeah, I mean, like I never thought I would ever be pals with Ricky Martin and yeah. or Penelope Cruz. Yeah, <laughs> um, I know, right? Uh, all uh, and Edgar Ramirez, all of, all of the above, who have become yeah. very uh, very wonderful additions and friends in my life. I've been following on social media. Yeah, it's know, insane. It's nice. Oh, and I don't even post half of it. I got all the fun stuff on my phone. <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll look at that after we go yeah. off. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, LC Fest. LC Fest. Year four, four, of course. Anyone who would year think four. it was year five also wouldn't know how to pronounce the new names of the new stars of um, Waitress. It's okay. Um, year four. So we're back at, in Central Park, right? Back in Central Summer Park. Summer stage. Where we belong. I'm so Where happy. Where you to belong. Be there. You're really happy um, with that. Spot. I'm so happy because we've moved around because it's been sort of a proof of concept. You know, we had to kind yeah. of get people's attention. And now that I think people are a little more familiar with it than they were when we started, um, I'm so glad that it's in Central Park because it sort of. Is uh, Central Park is already immediately iconic to New York, as is the Broadway tradition. So to yeah. have those two things uh, part of the equation is really, really special. So it's back at Summer Stage. Um, tickets are on sale. We'll, we'll talk about that a little later. But uh, yeah. we've got a fun little lineup. Um, yeah. I'm very proud of the... Every year we have like a really cool eclectic bunch of people. Yeah. Um, and uh, depending on people's time and availability, sometimes they're guests or sometimes they're headliners. But either way, to me, it's all the same just to have them there. Well, speaking of, of songs they're doing. Broadway.com Audience Choice Award winners, uh, Sutton Foster has like 14 of those, and she's oh, one of your headliners. <laughs> yes, she is. Everybody I'm loves so two-time to Tony Award winner, Sutton Foster. Dude, you know what? I had an interesting conversation yesterday with somebody. Uh, I always talk about how there are people in film and television that people outside of our community don't know have like a Broadway background. Right. I'll never forget like almost 10 years ago it was an Audrey McDonald concert. And this is like the, one of the most decorated Broadway events yeah. ever. Yeah. And uh, Mama woman, Broad. I call her Mama Broadway. Mama Broadway. Mama, <laughs> Mama Broadway. Broadway. So I'm seeing Mama Broadway and yeah. there's a woman next to me who had uh, who was telling me before the show, you know, I just love private practice. I didn't know <laughs> she could sing. And I was like, what are you high? Like, what, like what, how, how do you how do you not know that? Like, that's right. that's insane to me. Right. But then I realized there are a lot of people, and it's actually really cool that she saw private practice, fell in love with this woman, and went to go see her concert as a result. So I was telling this story yesterday yeah. to somebody about when I was doing press for Elsie, and he was like, "I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't know Sutton Foster could sing." And I was like, "Wow, what? Wow!" And just a big younger fan. But exactly, but that is so cool, and yeah. that is exactly the reason why we're putting on this concert. Yeah. We're trying to like celebrate this confluence of pop culture uh -huh. and musical theater and where they meet and it's cool that he's like, yeah, I can't wait because I've just wanted to hear her sing. And, wow. and I'm like, don't YouTube it. Come, only come to, <laughs> come to Elsie Fest. That's don't the only it. place where you can hear her sing. Guess uh, what? She could tap dance, too. Oh, I know. God, if I, I might just throw some tap shoes at her and see if she does, does, does anything. Don't throw them at her. Yeah, maybe she'll, well, she'll catch them with ninjutsu, like, precision, because she can do anything. So uh, we also have Joshua Henry. Yes. Who oh. just finished his run in Carousel, a fantastic Billy Bigelow. And, of course, he was in Violet with uh, He was in Violet Sutton. with Sutton. Foster. Maybe I'll make them sing something together. Nah, they probably won't. I'll just be in my brain. Um, but Tell also, about, Scottsboro um, Boys, American Idiot, the tour of Hamilton. He yes. was an amazing, yeah. amazing uh, Aaron Burr. He was so good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like the self-appointed president of the Joshua. Henry I love fan what club. a fan, <laughs> what a fanboy you are. I never miss. If he's in something, I never miss it. I've told him this several times. I, it's all, I'm always after the show, just dribbling like a baby. I'm like, you're literally one of my favorite people to watch. He also has very. He's very large. He's a very. He's he's, he's a beef, beef cakey man. He is fat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alex Newell, that guy. Ugh, oh my god! Freak are of you nature. A, are you a Once on This Island fan? <laughs> of course. It's like one of my favorite shows. Really? No, People love, really love that. I've show. I've always loved that show, mm -hmm. and now I love that production too. Yeah, I mean, I've always liked it. I'm not saying I dislike it. I've, I've always, you know, I like Flaherty and Aaron's, but I love mm -hmm. how there are people that are like really, really enthusiastic yeah. about that show, which is interesting to me. Um, but yeah, he. Uh, I mean, look, that dude has a, has the most disgustingly versatile voice. It's he insane. sang Norma Desmond to Andrew Lloyd Webber at that American Theater Wing thing. Oh, yeah. Week. I heard about that. Yeah. So, I met, I so might you never know what do he, that. <laughs> you don't know what he's going to pull out. I mean, yeah. that, that's exciting. It, it's, it's just amazing that he, I mean, I, let me put it this way. I was programming the set list today and yeah. I was like, I don't want to be anywhere near. <laughs> You're Meaning right that there. you don't want to perform? I don't want to be after Alex. No way. <laughs> well, I think they want you to perform, and you will. I will, but the, but the functionality of me playing is I play with a lot of the other guests. So uh, yeah. during my set, we have a lot of the guests come out, and it's sort of built in that uh, 
you know, they, they, we might sing together. I might just go accompany them. Uh-huh. But uh, anyway, sorry. I do. My comments are long. No, no, no. I just want to make sure we get all the information. Who are some of the guests we want to talk about? Rufus Wainwright. So Rufus, who can you talk about? Talk about being a fan. I mean, I can talk about everybody. I I love all these people equally. Okay. Um, but I will say those are kind of like our bigger headliners, as in they just have longer sets. Um, so some of our guests include. So you just mentioned uh, Rufus Wainwright, yep. who is, and I say this with no hyperbolic like leaning. Um, I, Rufus in the pantheon of like the most influential artists in my life hmm. is is the, is the top like mm-hmm. five. Um, his songwriting, his singing, his albums. I know very intimately well, and uh, he's hugely responsible for uh, a lot of the uh, inspiration in my life, especially as a young person. Like when I was like in my early teens, all the way to like college, he was like my guy. Does that mean you have a very strong opinion about what he performs? Do you want to be like? Honestly, it's the opposite. It's like do whatever you want. <laughs> okay, cool. uh, I'm just so happy that he's there, and I'm so thrilled that he's that he agreed to to join us. So, yeah. and he's and he's a really cool example of kind of the larger world world of Elsie that I'm trying to create, which mm-hmm. is, has he had a show on Broadway? No. Has he written any shows for Broadway? He's written operas, and he is very connected to the sort of cabaret musical theater tradition in the fact that he he did a, um, a Judy Gar- Garland tribute yes. album, which is a famous album that yeah. he did at Carnegie Hall. Um, so the man is definitely steeped in the Broadway tradition, yeah. even though you might not typically think of him immediately for something like this. But that's kind of the world that I'm trying to create. I don't want to make it just literally about uh-huh. people from Broadway. It's like people that celebrate Broadway. If he wrote a Broadway musical, you would consider starring in it, correct? <laughs> Absolutely. Let's dream, let's dream that one. Duh. Let's I mean, I feel like that. that dude has been hit up to write a musical a million ways from Sunday. I'm, I'm sure. sure he'll do it eventually. Yeah. And hint, Rufus. Because he <laughs> definitely watches this show every day. Definitely. All right, who else we got? Definitely. Who else we got? Um, we have a lot of other Glee pals. Yeah. We got uh, the Glee, That was a show. That, that was, was a show, show <laughs> that I was on with yeah, a lot of people. Have you heard of that? it? Before? First, you were the Harry Potter kid, and then you were that guy. Yeah, and then I was yeah, the Glee guy, and, and now I'm the, the, the scary Emmy murder winner. guy. Now you're famous. Yeah, now I like to ser- shake it up. <laughs> I, know, I like it. It's cool. Uh, it is cool. Yeah. So, who's there from Glee? Um, we have the venerable Matthew Morrison. Uh, oh, I know that guy. And depending on where you're coming from, of hairspray, is talk about people who've done different things. Right. Of hairspray fame or yeah. like he can sing too. Fame. By the way, he can sing. Yeah, he and he can dance. Yeah, he can boogie. Yeah. So Link Larkin, the original Link Larkin yes. on Broadway. Yeah. Um, he did a wonderful revival of South Pacific. Uh-huh. Um, uh, what else did he do? Uh, Light, so Light and Piazza. That's yeah. fun. You're laughing. You're like, <laughs> no, I think it's just no, funny. funny. I love what a, like, a fanboy you are. It's just funny. It's adorable. Yeah, You're like IBDB. This, I know all this stuff. <laughs> I love it. Uh, <laughs> what else? What am I missing, Matt? I mean, obviously, he was funny on Glee um, recently. Of, he uh, was in a play called a light, uh, something about the Appian Way. Remember that one? Oh, yeah. That was a light or something. You mean the Light and the Piazza? No, you're right. It wasn't the light. The, the something... Anyway, anyway, it was a play. Oh, it was a play. He just oh, plays that, that was that uh, Finding Neverland. Finding Neverland, of course. Yeah. So uh, the yeah. man has done a whole lot of cool stuff, and he'll be joining us. Uh, which He's also really done exciting. Feinstein's 54 Below. Yeah, well, He's so done a lot. So, so lot all these other people. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> he had a baby. He, uh, he had a baby. Yeah. He got married. He's done a yeah, lot of things thanks. in his life. Yeah. Uh, Grant Gustin, uh, more recently known as The Flash. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. But if you're really nerdy, uh, of Baby John fame from the tour of West Side Story. Because <laughs> um, the dude can dance his ass off. Which is, side note, I'm hereby campaigning for that guy to be Riff in West Side Story. The movie. Yeah. As okay. much as I would like to be that part. Yeah, I feel like you could slip into that Justin movie. If Justin Peck is is doing the choreography, and it's going to be as like, heavy so you're worried about ballet the loaded. Oh, man. But it should be. If they end up going that going ham with dancing, mm-hmm. I think it would be so breathtaking if if you had yeah. like do, and Grant's like a recognizable face now. If you had mm-hmm. a guy like that, and it, like that's a cool look between him and Ansel. He's tall. He's like manly. He's like he, he can definitely. He's do you know that kid is a Juilliard dropout ballet dancer? Really? Do you guys know that? that? I didn't know that. That I I may be wrong, but I can I'm <laughs> down no, to now it's a propagate fact. this lie. Um, did he propagate correctly? Is that whatever? Sure. What all these things? Whatever. I'm just building lies upon lies. The point is, he's an amazing dancer, and he should be riff. That would be so cool. I think you're um, a great dancer. I still remember your uh, American Dream, uh, oh, no. teenage dream moves. Oh no no no! You mean step touching? <laughs> yeah. That. And camera sweeps? Yeah. So no, no, you no, would that, not you that, would turn down an audition that don't for fly. the just, West Side Story? Justin film? Peck would laugh. He wouldn't even laugh at me. He would just shake his head and just point to the door. <laughs> There's no way. I can't do, do ballet. No, I would. No, I, I don't want to see that. I want to see like, okay, all right, dancing, all right. you know? Do you have any dream um, casting for like um, Anita or for Maria? Uh, Maria? Maria to me would be, I think Camila Cabello would be awesome. Oh. That'd be super cool. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, that, but, you know, what, what do I know? Yeah. What do I know? Hey, maybe there's a job in there for your, your, your friend Ricky Martin. 
Yeah, that could I don't be cool. Know. I mean, if they end up, so you know, in the musical, on the Broadway musical, Riff sings "Cool." Right. In the movie. Correct. The uh, what's his name? Uh, action. Right. Action sang, mm -hmm. and it was a new character for the movie. Yeah. If they keep action, I campaign for myself for uh, action. But action. If they, but if they keep Riff to do it. Right. Keep, keep Riff to do it. What the hell? You don't want to be right action here? if he's just the guy. You, you want to be action singing cool. You want to sing cool. Yeah, that'd be yeah. sweet. Yeah. Um, but again, can't dance. Uh, okay. So right, anyway, we have, okay, uh, we have Jody Benson. I Jody see. Benson. Yeah. <gasps> Talk about she's uh, Disney, Disney royalty. Little Legend, Mermaid. Disney icon, Disney royalty. Yeah, she's a little but Mermaid. also Broadway royalty. She was crazy for you. Crazy for you. I know. I love um, that you know that. And she. Uh, and what was? Oh my God! I forget it. It was Howard Ashman's show after. It's what Disneyland is from. The song Disneyland that she sang. Oh, that's from Smile. Smile. Smile, so of Smile. Yep. Was she in Smile? I think she was in Smile. Yes. I'm pretty sure she was. Yeah, yeah, totally. So that was like her thing. It was yep. like, mm -hmm. she, that's why she was doing, that's why she did The Little Mermaid. She had yeah. this relationship with Howard Ashman, and he's like, yeah, he should totally, have this yeah. sing this mermaid yeah. part. Um, so she's got a whole bunch of iconic. I think you should host like a trivia game show. Oh, dude, out. don't, so fun. do not fuck with me. I'm like, I am, I know my shit. Um, it's live, right? I could say that? Yeah, yeah. Um, sure. Uh, so of course, so we have we have her, which is really really exciting. Yeah. Um, and she is just the loveliest. She loves, I, I think, because she was where the Disney Renaissance like started. She doesn't uh -huh. shy away. Yeah, totally. The Little she, Mermaid was she a She loves moment. and embraces the fact that she's Ariel. Yeah. And I got the chance to go to Disneyland with her once, which was one of the coolest experiences of my life, to, in, for Disney things or anything in general. And uh, it was cool that so many people recognized her. Like yeah. so many people are like Jody, like what a pleasure! It was so <laughs> rad to see somebody that, in my mind, deserves to be acknowledged everywhere get acknowledged everywhere. That was so awesome. Uh, and but then, now you also have like the cast of some shows, right? It's last like, but certainly not least, I should I should mention. Yeah, yeah. I didn't forget you, buddy. Casey Cotts. So we now have an official oh. brother oh. loop. Happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of Riverdale um, fame. Of Riverdale fame, we have He's Casey, fantastic. who's also a singer and also yep. a performer. Um, the Cott family is a. Talented the bunch. Yeah, the cops. Um, so, uh, yeah, I caught, caught some fire. <laughs> but um, then you also have Be More, Be More Chill will be there. Be More Chill. The um, prom. We have the prom. Um, and on the Apocalypse. And on the Apocalypse is a fun little, uh, very culty kind of um, uh, movie musical. Uh, it's, it's, it's a zombie musical oh. movie. Uh, so we'll have some performances from that. Um, awesome. I like representing all walks of life that, that have musical theater attached to it, the musical tradition attached to it. So you probably didn't expect me to elaborate so much on each person. No, and now I'm, I'm terrified that I've I'm forgotten so people. It. No, I'm into it. Oh, and I should say there will be surprises. There will be people that are not okay. on the bill that okay. will be there. And I'm still working on some other people. Okay. If they I love how you pour yourself <laughs> into this. Oh, I it, pour it's, everything. It's a, such a great, uh, it's just become such an important part of your year, right? I yeah, mean, it is. This is, the, what's funny is during the Emmys and right after, even before people are like, oh man, you must, man, you must be so busy. And I'm like, no man, like the Emmys is a break. All I got to do is sit there and, and like, it's, <laughs> it's a passive right. experience. Like it's, it either happens to you or it does not. Mm -hmm. This is the busiest year, the busiest part, part of my year. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's because of this. Between this and a couple other projects I'm going, it all happened at once. So I'm all in on this. And uh, yeah, thank you. I guess is what I'm saying. Are you happy with your Emmy speech? Yeah, I have my, I have a whole spe spiel about the Emmy, the fact that you have to speak at an award show. You don't like that? No, I mean I like public speaking, but uh -huh. I take it really, really seriously. And it's just funny that the the minute hours or whatever leading up to it happening is. The, the most agonizing and terrifying thing is not the prospect of you uh, getting a thing or not, because you have no control over that. It's at its core, to me at least, the fact that if you, if your name is called, you now have to publicly speak timed in front of millions of people and live. It lives, and it lives forever. Too. And it lives yeah. forever. Yeah. Um, and that, with the weight of the moment, there's a lot of weird pressure that in re really shouldn't have anything to do, like for all intents and purposes, you should just go up there, shake a hand and be like, Cool, like you know, great, yeah. and then book it. Yeah, but it's weird that you have to like now do this yeah. other thing. Right. Um. So yeah, it was. It's fine. It's but cool it's, when you get to do it, though. You know, it reminded me of drama school. It when when there's a monologue that I was supposed to prepare for, and I kind of know it. Uh huh. Like I think I know it, and I'm just sitting there like stewing. Like God, if they call my name, like my adrenaline's going up. So so there's like a one out of ten, one out of five chance that you get called up. If you do get called, you're like. 
shit, 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 shit. Okay. Uh, let's see how much I remember. And then you do it. Um, or you don't get called. And then you're like, your your adrenaline balloon is just deflated. And you're like, ah, yeah, 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 what yeah. an emotional roller coaster. Yeah. So that's, I have a whole side spiel. Yeah. That's sort of half of it. Yeah. But, uh, so you're going to be part of the, uh, the Ryan Murphy, like, a lot of times when you do one of his shows, then you do more shows of his. Do you think that's going to happen? People ask me that. I feel like I already have. I've done three now. So I we feel like I've... Uh, I hope so. Damn, I hope so. Like, I didn't know he was going to just keep on getting... I didn't know he's he was going to keep getting way. more and more oh, prolific. Supports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. That's yeah. <laughs> so what, the $300 so million dollar man. I'm not sure. You know, he had this... He's this massive deal at Netflix. And I'm I like... Know. Yo, sign me up. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Yo, sign me up. Yeah. Hey. Uh, hey, Caitlin. Yeah. Anyone happen to be watching <laughs> with questions for um, Mr. Darren Chris? Just a couple hundred people. Okay. Quick side yeah. note, Chris Fitzgerald. Yeah. You love on him. that show. I know you like cheers. It's so funny. Is it really? Chris I, Chris I Fitzgerald. I have a list of like the most talented people I've ever met. Uh-huh. And it's a short list. Like li- the most talented mm-hmm. people. Uh, and Chris is definitely. What was the first thing you saw him do? Uh, we did a movie together called, uh, what well, was called Imogen? No, uh, it's called Girl Most Likely now. They changed the title. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw yeah, that. Yeah, he played Kristen Wiig's brother. Oh, that's right. And I'd totally. seen him in a bunch of stuff, and he went to ACT. I went to ACT as well, so we had some history there. But um, he's he's one of the most talented performers and the, one of the funniest yeah. performers I'd ever seen. I think in another life, he he would have been like an SNL dude. I don't think that mm. like was what interested him, mm-hmm. but like he could have if he wanted to. Um, amazing father, amazing person, amazing... like performer but if anybody gets a chance to see Chris Fitzgerald in anything like if you saw him waitress isn't he in that show. Dr- that like yeah. western show too wasn't there like some western show on Netflix or maybe I all I know, know. Happy is his up. main gig follow his TV career. gig but he's 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 so fucking funny it's mm-hmm. crazy okay but are there any fan questions oh, yeah sorry I just had to part. give a shout out to Chris Fitzgerald sure. yeah there are a ton so Sid asks if you could give your very little Darren Chris who de- dreamed of winning an Emmy and being on Broadway advice what would it be I mean because you know the end the spoiler <laughs> I don't say the ending you know where, where it ends up at some point in the story I would probably do nothing Probably mm-hmm. avoid me to not disrupt the space time continuum. Oh, yeah. Because um, it, 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 it turned out okay. Um, I will say, I never dreamed of mm-hmm. like of, of getting an Emmy per se. I just dreamed of like work, like getting to do Elsie and getting to be around people that I admire. Like, I've, I've spent a lifetime chasing my heroes. Mm-hmm. That's the goal. Uh, similar to what you guys are doing. You know, it's like we have this mm-hmm. passion that is invigorated by, by certain people right. and getting to be with them and talk with them and, and share in their narrative while they're on this earth is like the greatest privilege, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So for me, like my dream was like, how, when can I get to like work with Rufus Wainwright and like be able to talk with him and in essence say thank you for mm-hmm. getting me here. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. that's the dream, right? So even though something like Emmys is extraordinarily moving and like such mm-hmm. a, um, it, it is a, a dream uh, in the grander sense of the word. Yeah, um, yeah that was something, I'm, it's like a bonus. That was That's specifically something that is more attached to just the fact that I get to be in the, at the, at the party, you know, just to be in the group of people. So mm-hmm. I would say keep it up, you're gonna be just, you're just fine. You're gonna be just fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lily asks, how do you come up with the set list and choosing what songs for the performers for Elsie Fest? Well, usually I tell the performers to do whatever they want. And then if I see something that is, you know, if something's lacking or uh, I, I, I'd say it's very rare that I'll go in and suggest something. Um, but I, when they ask me what they should do, I will suggest, depending on who they are, you know, something that is something people know them for and something that's completely different and to embrace Elsie Fest as an opportunity to do something they would never otherwise get the chance to do. So, mm-hmm. you know, if I have a music, if I have Rufus, you know, when people are like, you know, play your hits, I'm like, play, play a Sondheim song if you want, you mm-hmm. know, or play something that's you would never do. Or likewise, if you're a Broadway star, I'd say do a pop song, like do something that you, you're not going to do otherwise. So um, I think it's a pretty eclectic bunch. I'm really hyper specific about making sure there's a, a rise and fall in a real like architecture to set lists and making mm-hmm. sure that we don't lose people with you know like six ballads in a row. Um, so I've been working pretty hard at that. Uh, I think I think we're gonna have a fun one. But I I do different set every year. I always try and add a song or two that I've never done anywhere else. So uh, this year's no exception. 
Exciting. Yes, yeah. exciting. Sure. Uh, Danny asks, how does it feel to look back on where you, how much you have done and accomplished in the last five years? <laughs> Oh, the last, last five years. That's what yeah, in, in the show, the last five last years, five I, years. I, that was Jeremy Jordan, not <laughs> me. Uh, and Adam Cantor and uh, Norbert Leo Butts and a handful of other people um, around the country and the world who have done it except me. Um, <laughs> One I, day. Uh, I don't know. I, I probably should be more content. I always feel like I haven't done enough, mm. um, which I think is just the artist curse in general. I think we all go... You know, like, oh, but, I ha but what I really want to do is this, right. mm -hmm. which is uh, healthy for ambition, but uh, crippling for um, being good to yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I, I, you know, there's, I feel like I'm behind in a lot of things. Uh, but then again, when Elsie happens, I'm extremely proud of the things that we have got to do. And um, yeah, I, I'm just getting started with a lot of stuff. Like mm -hmm. my whole life and career is, is the long game. Like I'm all about the, you know, the 10 year, plan of stuff like nothing is about a quick fix you know like even uh, american crime story is something that ryan murphy and i talked about probably like four years ago wow. um and so you know i i w waited i was in there for that i was i was waiting for when that show would happen um so yeah i, f I feel pretty good let's keep it up you know everything to me should be sort of like a, a slow exponential curve hmm. that's the idea yeah. Nice little math lesson. Yeah, especially especially Elsie. Like I, I, I wanted to just get kind of the snowball into something bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, we're getting closer to kind of my ideal version of what the festival will look like. Cool. Cool, yeah. cool, cool. Let's do, we can do one more question. Yeah, sure. sure. Okay, so let's end on this one. So Tara asks, what is the best part of Elsie Fest for you and why do you love it so much? I love giving the... Well, it's fans and artists a reason to be a part of something that that doesn't exist anywhere else. And mm -hmm. I don't think I'm flattering myself there. I created something that I longed for as a fan and saw white space for. Um, there's like we've had to set our own precedent. Like even when I'm trying to pitch this to artists or or festival goers or investors or people that are from the outside looking in, I can't just like reference. Oh, it's like this because there's no other thing like right. it which mm -hmm. is frustrating when you're trying to paint an image but exciting when you realize you're the only one uh so when you have um people coming from all over the country or the world to come just to this uh event to celebrate th this thing we all love so much uh seeing that community thrive uh is always really exciting and there's a lot of great broadway events that do that new york particularly is really great about you know, uh, a lot of wonderful events every year that bring people together because, um, you know, I don't think we're a pat ourselves on the back community. I think we're a, you know, hold each other by, mm -hmm. by the shoulders community. Mm -hmm. And um, we are inherently a, a, a family community, a family oriented community that likes to experience things together. Uh, so seeing that not only with the fans, but with the artists that show up who have their own histories with each other, um, who get to likewise experience something unlike what they're used to. I have a really great memory of Aaron Tveit at the first LC. And Aaron, look, people love Aaron Tveit. And he's done a lot of shows in a lot of great places. But um, I don't think until that moment he had performed in kind of a more rock and roll setting right. where mm -hmm. people have beers in their hands and they're standing. And it's encouraged to sing along and be rowdy as opposed to if you see him at Carnegie Hall or Fine Signs where it's a little more buttoned up. I mean, people get a little wild, but it's still it's still a little more polite, which is totally fine for mm -hmm. that venue. Mm -hmm. But seeing, I just remember him turning around and like giving me this look of like, holy shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. uh, which is, it's a symbiotic like lift for everybody. Yep. You know, it's exciting for Aaron to bring, bring it right back mm -hmm. to a crowd that's given it to him and it's excited for the audience to be able to give it to them, uh, give it to their favorite artists in that manner. So that, all that being said in one big cocktail, is is what gets me excited every year and why if, uh, after all the sweat and blood that has to happen with the weeks and months preceding uh i go god I, like i can't wait to do this again like every lc is just a building block for the next year so um 
Yeah. It's the coolest vibe. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just, it's really special to be Thanks, there. And to I'm see very, it. very, very proud of Elsie. You should be. Yeah. So uh, so if that if that doesn't mean anything to you, check it out. See if I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so Elvis Duran is hosting, right? Yeah. And, and then the Marie's Crisis sing-along bar is we'll still a there. thing. Yep. So That's you, there. You've so been... doors open at 5. Um, okay. Uh, weather, hopefully the weather is nice to us. It has been most years. Um, uh, it's in the park. So, you know, if you just want to make a day of it, a nice little Sunday. Uh I forget where we're at with Columbus Day in this day and age. Do we not count it as <laughs> as a holiday anymore? It's a hot. We have it off. Wherever we are, some people have it off, some people okay. don't. But the next day is a day off right. for some people. Right. Uh, so um, it's a nice three-day weekend. It's a wonderful time to spend in the park. So if you get the early doors open at 5, um, and uh, we will have the Marie's Crisis sing along there for the audience. Uh, but the show starts at six. You love a piano bar. I do indeed. Don't even <laughs> you don't open that Pandora's box on the way out. I don't want to talk about my piano bar, but yes, I do love a piano bar. I love a sing along, which again is connected to my love of connecting people. Right. Because um, it's all about the group uh, enjoying a thing together. Uh, so yeah, if you want to come early and have a sing along with the Marie's Crisis uh, guys and gals, uh, you can definitely do that. Show starts at six. Lights out at 10. Yep. You'll be home before you know it. Um, Everyone can go to lcfest.com, right? Yep, to check out tickets, tickets and, and maybe learn more about the artists. Um, and there's like general admission and there's like seated. There's seated things there's depending seats. on what you, can you prefer. You can seat, you can stand, you can do whatever you want. You can yeah. dance. You can dance, you can boogie, you can sing along, you can be rowdy, you can bring your friends uh, because I guarantee you whatever enthusiasm you bring will be matched by other people coming from all over to be there. So, um, yeah. Thank you for always keeping it interesting. I love it. Always, man. I love it. And it's Broadway. You still want a Broadway? I mean, you were in Hed- Hedwig and the Angry Inch. Uh-huh. Fantastic, by the way. Yeah. And how to succeed. I'm Thanks, just bud. rattling off um, credits. But it's Broadway still it's Broadway still in your future. That's always the goal. Like, all right, it's I'm always just, the goal to I know. come back. You always say it, but I just want to make sure you just keep saying it. I just want to confirm. I, I think, <laughs> they're all waiting to hear. I so. think the itch that has become the, the, the most... Itchy, <laughs> the, itchiest itch. the itchiest itch that is just growing more and more itchy over the past few years is I I have to write another musical I have to like mm-hmm. that is it's it's probably one of my favorite forms of writing yep um, so cool. that has to happen and it will happen it just takes a long time <laughs> scratch that itch Mister yes well, we're coming to you Broadway <laughs> ten five ten years from now. We'll be yeah, here uh, waiting. Awesome. Please do. All right, everybody. Thanks, guys. LC Fest is this Sunday, 6 to Please 10. Come. I'd love to see you Go guys. Go to lcfest.com. Get more information, tickets. You don't have to sing. You can just sit there and enjoy just the show. Just hang out. Yeah. I don't want to pressure them. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. So Bye. excited to see Thanks you. Thanks, Broadway.com. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single day on Facebook. You can listen to this interview in a podcast form by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow when we talk to Leah Delaria of Collective Rage, a play in five Bettys.